If you want to see more videos like this, join the channel here on YouTube or on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Welcome to the folks who have joined recently. You'll see their names at the end listed in pink. There have been a lot of requests online for a teardown of the Ultralight Mark V since it was announced, so we're going to do that today. We've had a few other Motu interfaces on the bench before for teardowns, and I will link those in the description below, along with links to all of the data sheets for the critical components we look at inside. The way this one's put together is a little different from the Mark of the Unicorn interfaces I've taken apart in the past, but it's still built just as well, very rugged. You just wanna be careful with those knobs if you're gonna carry it loose in a bag or with other stuff floating around in your Pelican. Now what you saw at the start of the video was one of these little top screws right here cammed out and it might be that my inexpensive driver was just not quite the right fit, uh, but I had to put a little slot in that with the Dremel to be able to get that screw out because these panels uh, all kind of hold together real tight and use the screws to pull the panels into alignment. So that one was in there pretty good. And I'll replace that, no big deal, no damage done. And I don't think that's really a reflection of Motu's quality at all. It's really probably time that I upgraded from these generic tiny Torx uh, screwdrivers that I have to something a little more professional. I did eventually gain access here. The front panel comes off and there's really just the one ribbon cable and it's a big chunky one, so it's very easy to detach. It's not like a ZIF cable or anything delicate. And once you get that front uh, panel off, you'll see how the rest of it kind of comes apart. I'd really genuinely love to hear your thoughts on what we're seeing here because researching for this video, it certainly seems like this interface crosses into some sections of the audio world that I'm not so familiar with. There are folks using this for hi-fi purposes, a lot of folks interested uh, in surround sound for home theater, and then there's a whole group of Linux folks that seem to have interest in using this and then controlling it and getting control of it through the web app and doing Doing some other interesting things with it. So definitely let us know what you think and what you're interested in this unit for. That being said, to start out, I know a lot of folks had questions about what op amps were being used, and we'll see on the input and output side, the OP1678 from Texas Instruments is used throughout, and there's a good number of those. There's another op amp, the L49724, that's on the input side, and we can see those sitting right next to the mic pre chip here. And that is a digitally controlled microphone preamplifier. They're using a PGA 2500i, again, Texas Instruments, and those are Burr Brown preamps as well. And then for converters, we've got ESS Tech, we've got the ES9842 Pro analog to digital converter. And then for the digital to analog side on the outputs, again, we have an ESS Tech ES9026 Pro. And the last couple of things I'll point out are the Lattice FPGA, and this is the LFE5U-25F, and that's where the digital signal processing is taking place. And just next to that is the 32-bit ARM processor. This is the Atmel SAM S70N20. And again, all of the data sheets for what we've talked about here are in the description below so you can read them for yourself. So 
So what do you think about what we've seen so far? Is there anything that jumps out at you? Is there anything obvious here that I'm not talking about that you would have definitely included in this video? Because I'd love to know from your experience, especially at the component level here, uh, dissecting this kind of stuff, doing a teardown like on the EEV blog or like Mr. Carlson's lab is absolutely above my pay grade and skill set. And I wouldn't feel right trying to uh, decipher what exactly was going on here or what choices were made and why, because I simply don't have that engineering experience. But I'd love to hear if you do. So please feel free to educate me in the comments below and share your knowledge if you've got any. Uh, I find this stuff fascinating and I'm constantly trying to improve my skills and understanding of exactly what's going on under the hood of devices like this. But for everybody that was curious, I hope this was a useful look and I hope me pulling this apart was worth your time checking out this short video. Thanks so much for watching.